<laughs> Sometimes there's too many bills. The bills are too damn high, some memes will say. You gotta get a roommate. Everybody, most people have had some sort of roommate at some point in time, and that's just how you gotta facilitate life. Fantastic? Question mark? Morning, everybody. My name is Curtis, and here we go. Uh, through the air, across the ocean for the first time ever, uh, there is an audience member for the show. They're not physically here, they're raising the roof. Anyway, um, they're in between the two cameras, so it's even weirder, because I'm like, I gotta look at the camera, but then there's a person who's just off-center a little bit, so I'm gonna be looking around like a crazy person. Either way, this is the magic of the show. You get to hear about how it, how it comes to be and how it go. Uh, in the auspices of trying to stick with the topic, um, and making the show more tight because uh, Ripley's over here making the rules and editing out all that stuff I just said. None of it's gonna stay in. Hmm? No? Ripley's the laziest cat in the world. She barely exists. Well, I've had a few roommates, like not a whole lot of roommates um, in my life in the world. Uh, some of them have been the funnest in the world and others, uh, let's say, they laid on their bed and stared at a bunch of gargoyle uh, candles for way too long so we all went somewhere else because, hey, what's going on? What's up with Wes in there? Um, I think he's staring at his candles? He's what now? He's just laying on his bed, staring at the candles. I mean, you know, we're college students, we don't have much. But, I don't know, you, you do that thing where it's like, I'm really into something. That's, you know, it's college, it's the time to be a thing. And, and Wes's thing, he decided, was gargoyles. I'm gonna be really into gargoyles. Either way, Xanatos, he did it. And... Wes decided, sorry Wes, but you don't watch this show, that's fine, um, I'm gonna be into gargoyles. And, you know, the, the, there, was a, there was, there possibly still is, a store called the San Francisco, and some other offshoot similar stores where they would have a bunch of crappy crap where it's like, check it out, you want a wizard? We hired some Malaysian lady to sculpt and paint a thousand wizards, and by Malaysian lady, I mean a factory in Malaysia where we hired old ladies for zero money to very nicely paint these things. So understandably, like, yeah, I wanted some of those. And I don't think this camera is working, or the other camera's working, so that's fine. We'll just talk to this camera <laughs> today. Uh, sometimes that happens. Um, so, whatever. Uh, hopefully Ripley will crop something in there that doesn't make me look too crazy. And... Uh, yeah, so I mean, he decided that that was going to be his thing. Uh, I wasn't willing to pay the, you know, crazy outrageous, pr outrageous prices for a beautiful statue that was $29 or $24. Like, no, again, we're, we're college students. We got nothing. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy of me, I think. Like, oh, I got my student loan. We're getting 20 nuggets. That's what we're doing. That's how many nuggets you need when you've got three friends. Or we're just one person. Honestly, you want nuggets? Oh, we're getting cheeseburgers? Oh, cool. I'll also get 20 nuggets because I'm going to eat that many. Probably if nobody stops me, I can eat a lot of nuggets. I'm a little guy. But those things are... Ugh. Every time the Facebook says, hey, check it out. Nuggets aren't food. It comes out of a gun, like a nugget gun. It's all mashed up magic. Yeah. Sorry. The word magic is still in there. Can't even not say what I'm talking about the meat gun that makes this weird paste that is deliciousness. I don't want to like it. Basically a vegetarian vegan for like almost a year. And uh, that was one of the reasons. Like I don't want to eat something that's all mashed up, but I want to eat something so mashed up and delicious. It's so much salt. Regardless, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, I'd bring nuggets to my roommates and we'd have a good time. Hand gestures and everybody's feeling fine. It was my side of the room. I've got a, I've got a bed. I've got a little dresser, I got a desk, uh, I've got the makings of some sort of life where I could do things if I didn't have some person sharing my room, so I will never spend any time in this room ever. Uh, because he's got like a mattress on the floor, and a pile of laundry, and then a little plastic shelf that's got these gargoyle candles, and, uh, and like a little gargoyle statue that probably belongs on a lawn. Either way, um, no offense, very good person, um, does very great stuff for his community now, he's, and, and everything's great, but, you know, in that college life when you're trying, like, I'm sure he's not laying on a bed now as a grown-up with his kid and his wife going, let's just stare at these candles like crazy people. We were young, we were stupid. 
I'm sure I did, I know for a fact I did a thousand more things that were just way more dumb and ridiculous. Within that house, that, that apartment, there was, there was a few of us, and I don't know, I have a thousand Amanda stories, and I'm just going to straight up stay, it's about Amanda, and she can deal with that. You don't know, there's a million Amandas in the world, so it'll, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And, uh, I don't know, I don't know, like, some, sometimes people become your best friend, and then you just, you just allow them to be themselves, and they allow you to be yourself, and, and everything's cool, and everything's awesome. She's, she's the one I talked about on earlier episodes, where it's like, hey, I couldn't, I couldn't live with, with my ex, and not get stabby, so when we lived together, uh, I mean, we lived together more than once in more than one place, and so many different things came with each place, uh, i.e. neighbors, or one was above a store, so anytime people hung out outside in front of the store, as teens tended to do back in the day before, you know, iPads could keep you inside all day long, um, we would go, she would usually go into her room and I'd go into my room and then we'd open the windows. Mm. All right, we got a problem with the audience. Ripley, you edit that out. All right, we took a little break. Ripley edited that out. Camera's back. Hi, camera two. How you doing? Excellent. So we'll be going over there occasionally. Um, so yeah, Amanda and I would um, pretend to be a horrible, horrible old married couple and we'd yell at each other through the walls if we were having the most insane fights about the most insane situations, i.e., oh, did those kids just buy ice cream sandwiches at the store? We're going to yell about how somebody didn't pick up ice cream sandwiches and blah, 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 blah. Then we'd sit and we'd listen to their reactions, to their just bewilderment of like, oh my God, like what's going on up there? We're hearing this and we're sitting there like, oh my God, like they think this is real. We're amazing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with human beings. As human beings, we have a lot of fun messing with people. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just a Cape Breton thing, but that's what we do in Cape Breton. Nobody's genuine. Everybody's trying to ruin everybody else's life for the purposes of a laugh. I don't know. You do what you got to do. Uh, some people put their face on YouTube for whatever reason and then talk about all of these things. Um, so we would do crazy accents, uh, fake languages, all kinds of things, and try to get all kinds of reactions. One day we brought a bunch of clay uh, back from school because, you know, animation art school, we do all kinds of just dumb things. Uh, she decided to make a little man. Okay, and then I feel like, I can't quite remember, she attached a note to it that said like, hi, or ah, I'm falling, and then dropped him out the window for these people to find. And then, again, we listened to the reactions, and they genuinely uh, must have been the same people that were always there listening to us be crazy because they were thrilled. They were absolutely thrilled to suddenly be like part of it, to be involved in like, oh my God, we got something from them. You know, whatever's going on up there, we got a, we have a memento, a message, like it, who knows what's happening. Um, and then after a while, uh, we discovered that a person we went to school with or adjacent to lived right next door in the next window because uh, one day we discovered that their cat would like pretty much hang all the way out the window and try to like look into our windows and we were like friends with this strange cat and then one day, hey, it's me, that guy from school, popped his head out. Um, I had no idea it was you guys over here. You're crazy. You guys are crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the funny thing about paper thin walls is you can hear all this and we just assumed you were you were also already a weird old couple that was like, yeah, 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 they're yelling like we probably yell and we just never heard it or nobody ever lives in this place so we got free reign to be as weird as we want to be. Nobody's complained at all yet. And then we found out, oh, we've been doing a show this whole time for the neighbors and they've been loving it and also now we know, hey, guess who plays the drums? That guy. Gonna let him keep doing it. Only you hear it in your room, Mandy, and we don't hear a thing. I don't know how that works, but sucks to be you. That was the worst place for Mandy to live ever. But me and Amanda, everything was was pretty much fantastic. I mean, uh, none of our got, I mean, none of my food got stolen because me and Amanda shared our food. Um, so no big deal. But Amanda was the one who stole food. So Mandy had to deal with having her food stolen all the time uh, and... I mean, I tried. I really genuinely tried to be the good person and say, hey, maybe you should stop stealing Mandy's food. After the bag of cheesies gets halfway empty, she's definitely going to notice that she didn't eat any cheesies yet and they're mostly gone. And then we're going to have to, 
we're gonna have to get a lecture of some kind of, hey guys, we're roommates, and this lecture I'm giving you right now, you want this again from Mandy? And the answer was yes. Yes, I do. It's gonna be fun. Why? How? What? Let's go take a cab to the mall. Okay. It's what, five minutes? Nothing crazy should happen. And Amanda used to love drama class and being in drama things and just being as dramatic as humanly possible. So in the cab, she would always come up with a bizarre story and I had not done anything fun. I was still didn't talk yet. I still didn't talk out in the world. And she was dragging me kicking and streaming into the world with, oh my God, like that was crazy. You're crazy. Hmm? What are we doing now? You, I can't, like, I can't, there's so much blood. I can't believe you did that. Can't believe what? No, don't. Don't do this to me now. Like, I, I don't know, in my head, like, cab drivers are, are like police. They have some sort of official vehicle. You know, they have a radio. Somebody could be here and take us away in no time whatsoever. I, again, I'm very sheltered. I don't know how the world works. And she keeps going on, like, well, I mean, you, you went crazy. You went crazy. What you did, I can't, like, that's disgusting. Like, I mean, I know it was kind of, I was there, I was kind of supporting you, but that was a lot of blood. The knife, like, you left the knife, your prints are all over it, it doesn't matter. And I'm literally, like, not, like, please don't pay attention to her. She thinks this is funny and fun, and we're, I'm not, I didn't do anything wrong. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Get out of the cabin. I'm just, like, infuriated. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? It's like my safety has just been completely invaded. You just, I don't know, said a whole bunch of horrible stuff. He didn't flinch at all. He's not calling anybody. If somebody's dead somewhere, he doesn't care. He's just driving a cab. He's not like a cop at all. And that's when, you know, I stop worrying about cabs and, uh, and their authority because it doesn't exist. And when I'm getting a drive home with a cab because I'm drunk, I'm usually 90% sure that cab driver is as drunk as I am, if not more so. So, I don't, I don't know. No offense to cab drivers. I'm sorry. Hopefully you're the sober one, and I'd love to meet you someday. But in this town, holy snaps. Fear for my life. What? We gotta watch a cartoon. Cartoon lever. <laughs> That's how quick that happens. Ripley edits this back together and everything's fine. Hi Ripley. Anything? No? Excellent. Pointing way too much. Um, and slouching. Hello. This is me in my posture. Ah. I, uh... <laughs> it's really weird when you can see somebody actually react to what you're saying, but still also in the peripherals, because you're still trying to make sure you're looking at a camera in some way and adjusting your sleeves. And, uh, but it's still there and you can, you're very well aware of it, which makes it better because suddenly you're not talking to yourself like a maniac, but you still kind of are because I'm talking to you, whoever you are, uh, Terry Cormier or, or Nick, 
uh, the original and etc. and others. But if you want a special shout out, comment and, and say things. And uh, then of course there's the special audience member who will go remain nameless forever. There's no way to know. There's no way to know. It's the one. It's one person. It's so easily to shout out to. I say Terry Cormier a thousand times a day on this show, and yet, sorry, I don't even. I wish I could. I wish I could. Everybody, slide up to the edge of your seat. Everybody, slide to the edge of your seat. All right, because that's where you need to be. Uh, today, our audience member is Isabel. Here's oh, ah, here's a picture of her, and. <laughs> What that reaction means, hey, don't put my picture up there. I'll put up a drawing and everything will be fine. Or a triceratops, because uh, she likes dinosaurs and that's cool. Um, all right, a few quick. Let's let's just do. Let's just make this the the Amanda episode, because uh, there's too many Am Amanda stories. Um, Mandy, the real quick Mandy story uh, before we go back is one day Mandy was like, or well, always Mandy is. Hey, I'm a responsible kind of adultish person. You guys are. Being silly, like we're in animation school. That's I feel like that's this is the one place we're supposed to be silly. Uh, you need to be a little more silly. And then one day, Mandy was like, "Oh, geez, uh, there it goes." Like, oh, like Mandy has some kind of disease that we don't know about. Mandy's very sick, and we're learning something. What what's wrong, Mandy? And then Mandy's Mandy's hand just started going crazy. She's like, "What? What?" She's like, "My robot hand." What? My robot. And then she starts like hitting her own hand and uh, trying to stop this robot hand from going so crazy. She did it again with her robot leg. And it's like, we've lived with you for basically a year, like almost a whole year. And not that you haven't been a good person. You haven't been crazy for a year. And then like, we're pretty much packing up, getting ready to go. This is our last, last minutes of Mandy. And then it's like, oh, by the way, guys, I'm also crazy. Like... That Avengers scene when the Hulk is just like, but you need to get upset, like, joke's on you guys. I'm always upset. That's an awesome line, but uh, if you put it in the rest of that movie, it doesn't make any sense. I hate that movie, and I love that movie. Can't watch it again. Sorry, Avengers. You ruined yourself for me. When I didn't live with Amanda at one point, uh, I, I showed her how to use uh, the ICQ which I think I didn't realize until many years later meant like, I seek you, eh? Like you put the words together, it says, I seek you. I thought it stood for something. I seek you. Never, never bothered looking it up, just like HTML, which I have looked up and I don't remember out of all the weird things I do. And so I showed her how to use that and was like, all right, here's the thing. Here's James, you can talk to him, but you won't. Here's Ron, you can talk to him, but you won't. Talk to me and Melissa and we'll have a great time. All right, cool, I'm going to work. Don't, don't rearrange my apartment. That's simple. Just don't rearrange my apartment. I'm going to work. Okay, and don't abuse the cat. Simple instructions. Nothing too complicated about that. And I go to work. And then the messenger pops up. And the camera's broken again. Ugh, anyway. Uh, so the, uh, the messenger pops up and is like, Hey. Hey, Flav. Alright, so I just lost the guest, Ripley. Fix all this stuff so people so I don't lose guests mid show. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll find Isabel again later, and on with the show. Here we go. Uh, the messenger pops up like, "Oh hey, so so your cat doesn't like eating uh, Smarties boxes? Hmm. Don't don't feed my cat cardboard. What do you mean? Like ah, I tried to see if he wanted to eat any Smarties and he didn't want those. So then I tried to see if he wanted to eat." some Smarties boxes, and he wouldn't eat the Smarties boxes either. What? What are you talking about? Now, I know she's not actually going to force feed or make the cat eat anything that's going to kill it. Maybe she didn't know that you're not supposed to feed animals chocolate back then. It was kind of a new thing, I think. But regardless, I'm at work like, how do I, how do I concentrate? How do I do my work when somebody, like, what are you doing? And then, bing! Like, pops up again later on, like, ah, your cat doesn't like taking baths. What are you talking? Why did you try to give my cat a bath? Like, no, I, I got a bath. You got a bath in my apartment? That's, what are you, are you having a vacation at my apartment? My apartment's not that nice. Is this what you have to do in order to not rearrange my apartment when I'm not home? All right, that's fine. So, so what happened then? Like, well, I was in the bathtub and I tried to lure the cat in and he eventually showed up. Mm-hmm. 
and then I got him to get up on the edge of the tub. Okay, and then I tried to pull him in the water. That's not a thing you're supposed to do to cats. Like, he freaked out and, you know, scratches and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That's a thing you should expect, and I guarantee you did. What's going on? And that's, I mean, like sometimes if you want to, if you want to have lesser bills or you want to have friends, sometimes you got to let the crazies in and discover you're crazy as well. Because in that same thing, when we lived together, the whole bath thing was, I'm going to go take a bath. Oh, okay. Don't go anywhere. What do you mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to be alone. I want to talk to somebody. You want to, well, I'm, I'm just going to be out here drawing and listening to music. All right, well, let's turn the music down a little bit so you can hear me. So I can hear you what? What are you talking about? Like, I don't know, whatever I think of, or if, so you can entertain me. Entertain myself right now, the music and the drawing, you enjoy your bath and have a good time. What do you mean? How does this, what? Everything in life is new to me. I've never really lived with anybody outside of my family, and they never did this before. What are we, what are we talking about? And, well, well, we'll figure that out while you're in the bathtub, I guess, because she goes in the bathtub, and then it's just like, hey, entertain me. I got nothing. I don't know what we're talking about. And then, okay, fine. I either make up a story or tell her a story or just start saying things. And then you can't hear things well when you're in the in the bathtub. That's just why you go in the bathtub to get some nice, quiet solitude. And she yells out, did you just say AstroTurf? I can't think of any reason I would ever, ever in the world say AstroTurf. I think I would say fake grass, if anything. Well, no. What? Well, what did you say? I genuinely have no idea now, because now all I can think of is, why? Why would I, why would I have, it didn't. What? And then that was, that was how our life went for a long time. Sometimes we'd be sitting there drawing and all of a sudden somebody would be yelling at me from another room. What? What's happening? And then we'd just have a conversation and that was, that was normal, because things become normal. That's, that's what it is. You have a family, you have a life. I mean, right now she has these Two little twins living in a house, running around, doing things. In my life, like, that's not a normal thing. But now that has become, those are her roommates. That's normal to her now. I don't know why I said that so weird. It's normal to her now. Because it's so unnatural to me to purposely live with two small children. Especially ones that, like, kind of look alike. Except one's awesome and the other one I've picked as not my favorite. I won't say it's a terrible, just one of the favorites. And the other one is not. That's fine. I can't like more than one kid. Care for, care about in some way. So that's that's too many. That's too many. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had twins. I picked the fun one. And the other one is yeah, it's just regular. Hey, regular baby. I can see regular babies everywhere. I'm sorry. That's just how stuff goes. Your regular baby roommate is not is not as fun as your other regular baby roommate who seems super fun. Maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, I don't really try at all to hang out with children so I don't hang out with these children. Maybe they're both the worst, maybe they're both the best. But still, not as bad as uh, the last roommate note is uh, uh, these other two uh, friends of mine, they they shared a very small space when we lived in college, living in those dorm rooms. So, the, you know, one bed was here, the other bed was there, basically, you know, four feet apart. And one, one of the roommates had night terrors that would involve sitting up straight in the middle of the night and screaming things like war and Armageddon and such. Screaming them. Terrifying. That's terrifying. And I don't know, I would describe him, but let's just say he was the kind of person that just terrified me naturally. Super nice guy, but had the look of toughness and trouble, which I did not. Therefore, oh, if you scream war and death and the devil in the middle of the night, then we're probably not going to get along. We got along great. Shared a desk for years. Regardless, he didn't stab me. You didn't stab me. I only lost one audience member so far. Uh, maybe next time I'll get this all figured out. And I, I actually, I know exactly what happened, and it's because of the internet speed. Either way, please be good. Be careful. Like, subscribe, click, buy my books, and do the things. Here's some pictures of that stuff. And... Morning, everybody. Hey, click on my butt or Ripley's butt to subscribe. Click on my butt. Click on my butt. Click on my butt. Click on my butt. <laughs>